When it comes to video game praise, a lot of people will be very quick to talk about how incredible a game's graphics are, and by that they usually tend to mean the character models, or the environments, or even the particles slash effects look absolutely amazing. It's not like everyone's pointing and yelling, oh snap, look at that ammo counter. However, it's user interfaces like these, or UI, that really deserve some more love, as to be honest, being unobtrusive and relaying all of the important information to the player is actually really tough to get right. So what we thought we'd do to Today has shed some light on this rather unsung hero of video games in an effort to spread appreciation for those that work on such facets, but also to clue you in on what makes good and bad UI so important. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 things you didn't know about video game UI. Number 10. How a game forces you to read the screen. One of the first things that you learn when starting out a specialism in UI is the rather craply named screen real estate, which makes it sound like the art of building student halls on top of your TV. But it's actually the priority and flow of how you read the screen, because each part has a different level of importance. Here in the West, the highest priority radiates from the center of the screen outwards, dead center being the most important, with the top left corner also being the more important and bottom right being the least, because we read from left to right. This means that you should always put the most important UI in the center and then work your way down the priority list. If your character has an important resource that you need to manage from second to second, don't put that information in the bottom right, put it over on the left, you absolute goose. Also, here's an interesting point. In fighting games, player 2 actually gets a mirrored UI and because we instinctively expect the information to be read in reverse, that's why the bars deplete into the center. Brilliant, right? Number 9. Hidden Tricks of a Health Bar the chances are, if you're like me when playing a game, you tend to be a bit more daredevil-like when you've got a full health bar than when you're at death's door. But have you ever noticed that when you're on your last legs, you tend to actually go completely ham, eking out that last 1 HP and throwing caution to the wind in an act of desperate survival? Well, sorry to let you in on a bit of a secret here, but that last bit of health? Well, that's usually artificially inflated to make you feel like you could die at any moment, but you actually won't. And by contrast, the start of your health bar sometimes depletes a bit faster so it's more obvious that you're being damaged. So the next time that you look at a health bar, think of it in raw numbers. 100 to 90 HP will deplete in a flash, 89 to 2 HP will deplete at a normal rate, but that last 1 HP might actually be more like a hidden 10 to 20%. The more you know, eh? Number 8. That red outline when you're about to die in every game. You know when you take a bit too much damage in a game and how the screen looks like you're drowning in a jam factory? Well, that's an imposing use of a screen bordering vignette. However, it's not the only use of the vignette in gaming. If you're a fan of VR, then you'll know that full screen dark vignettes are actually used to limit field of view to stop people from puking their guts up. Similar effects are used in the standard FPS to slightly dull your field of view, making you focus on the center of the screen. And in games like Overwatch, each status effect that you're placed under also has a unique vignette effect, meaning that you're fed information as to how to avoid or counter the action without a word being uttered. So you know what? Thank you, vignette, you understated ledge. Number 7. Why that one type of skill tree is everywhere. It can really suck when you start a new game and have absolutely no idea of what you're supposed to do or where you're going. But you know what? Fret not, my friends, because the UX designer is here to hopefully reduce all that stress with the likes of minimaps, clues, and helpful pointers. Their job is to basically tell you what to do and where to go without actually saying anything. It's actually a pretty tough job when you think about it, which is why certain aspects like skill trees take a rather homogenous approach in their designs. With a skill tree, you are basically laying out a ton of information without the player even realizing. For example, you might have a late tree unlock which allows the player to climb up, I don't know, vine-covered walls. And that tells the player, oh, these vines here, they're not just for show, right? Which then subsequently becomes, well, I guess whatever's up those vine-covered areas must be really important, so that should be my goal. And voila, suddenly, just by reading a progression path or tree, you've now given the player an immediate narrative. Pretty good going, right? Number 6. The Trick to a Good Video Game Menu have you ever sat down and thought about menus? No, no, I'm not talking about picking your bread at Subway, although, of course, in that instance, the correct answer is always hearty Italian. 
I'm talking about video game menus. Have you ever stopped to think about how much effort goes into them? Well, this is because even a basic looking menu can have up to tens or even hundreds of different permutations, and you need to make sure that the player isn't buried with information or that important features are hidden from them. This is why flowcharts are the main method for menu delivery, as each choice leads you to a subsection where you're honing in on what the player is actually looking to do. It seems so obvious when you think about it, but trust me, a lot of thought goes into these. In fact, while we're talking about menus, let's talk about a really decent example. Number 5. Why Dead Space's menus were so special the chances are, if you're picturing a heads-up display, you're thinking about non-diegetic UI. This is basically UI that exists outside of the game's universe, elements that are only visible to the player through the HUD and not to the characters themselves. For example, health bars in fighting games, bar ones with Deadpool in at least, are not visible to the combatants. Yet Dead Space decided to be a perfect example of infusing the HUD into Isaac Clarke's world. Information would pop up and directly apply itself to him, and his suit's spinal light system reflected his health. It was a persistent feature that made the world of the player and Isaacs feel more connected, and as such, it made things a damn sight more immersive when it came to the scares. Cheers. Number 4. Fonts, Localization, and Legibility Okay, this is the trickiest bit to sell, because fonts aren't exactly very sexy. Well, unless you count New Helvetica, because oh boy, that is some hot stuff. But you know what? Fonts will become not just a necessity, but a passion if you ever get into UI design. And that's because of a number of reasons, for starters. I mean, imagine you've just spent weeks working on a clean, legible, sexy text box, and so of course you're not going to let anyone just slam in some 36-point papyrus monstrosity in there, are you? Secondly, it's also the responsibility of the UI specialist to think about super important information like localization, and that not every country uses the same alphabet. So it's up to you to check things like, are all the characters in your chosen font supported in Cyrillic? Have you considered the increased character size when looking at hiragana and kanji? Because in that case, your sentences might fit into that text box in the Roman alphabet, but that doesn't mean that it's going to fit when the characters are double the width. Honestly, it is a bit of a nightmare. Number 3. The Basic Principle Behind Loot and Unlock Icons Feedback to the player is one of the facets of UX that seems simple yet can be extraordinarily tricky to get right. Do you trickle feed your player lots of lovely scrumptious bites of rewardy like goodness, or do you hold out on them and give them one enormous explosive giganto sized reward? I mean, however you do it, you need to make those rewards worthwhile, and unsurprisingly one of the simplest ways of conveying value is to use imagery to the player that associates a sense of wealth. You probably didn't realise how often you're being manipulated manipulated in this way, but colour-coded items always have purple, which is the regal colour to signify important items, and gold, which is, well, the money colour to signify that they're the best. Icons that signify progress or winning are almost always rosettes, coins or trophies, and even other less obvious stuff like stars are always made of gold. Hell, PlayStation charts your personal value in tiers of trophies, whilst Xbox has its own currency. You may think that you're earning a new special power, or secret attack, or even just some EXP, but the next time the big flashing lights start up, just look at how much is all about the money. Number 2. Legibility first, aesthetics second they say there's a real overlap between graphic design and UI creation, which is absolutely true in one key area. Legibility always comes first. It sounds so simple, yet bad UI is often bad because it forgets this fundamental principle. A player should be able to read the UI's information with the most rapid of glimpses. If the player has to stop and ask, is that a 1 or a 7, for even a second, the UI designer has failed. I mean, if you ever played a game with UI that's just bloated, overly ornate and drawn your attention in the wrong way. I don't know, maybe it's like a gothic game where the HUD has beautifully painted gargoyles on it and you just can't stop ogling their fantastically rendered claws, even as your character is getting absolutely slaughtered in-game. Or maybe it's just outrageously large or gaudy. UI is a service to the player, and good UI doesn't need to be invisible, but it should just feel invisible. In that regard, it should be graphically subtle, practical, and elegant, and the more that you can strip it back to its essence, the higher your chances of having a readable, clear, and efficient UI. And number one, spatial awareness. 
One other type of UI that's become indispensable in recent years is spatial UI. Unlike the HUD types, mainly diegetic and non-diegetic, spatial UI exists within the game world to serve the player, but is completely unknown or non-existent to the in-game characters. Now, spatial UI tends to be very prevalent in open world games, anything from big shiny arrows pointing to your next objective right through to icons above treasure chests. But spatial UI tends to get a bit of a bad rep these days. And I mean, you can look at the likes of Assassin's Creed Creed and just say, God damn, the screen looks like icon soup. But if you ever tried to do one of those wretched follow this important bloke through a market without him seeing you missions without a mission marker, or without markers showing sight lines, or without big red chevrons telling you not to go that way, because you know what? You will probably insta fail all the time. I mean, yeah, that's a bad example because nobody enjoys escort or follow missions in the first place. And side note, developers really need to stop implementing them because I legitimately know no one that actually enjoys these. But if you have to do them, it is better to have some lovely UI assistance. After all, it's here to help. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 things you didn't know about video game UI. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further about all things to do with video games, TV, film, and anything else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal streaming channel. Yes, that's right. And at the moment, I'm playing through Fallout New Vegas with a ton of mods installed, most of which are Warhammer 40k, and it's utterly insane. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We spoke today about video game UI, about the subtle little hints that help you get through life a bit easier in video games. And you know what? I'm going to give a very unsubtle hint and say, I hope that you are well, my friend. And I hope that you are treating yourself fairly, both mentally and physically, because you, yes, you listening to this video, deserve love, happiness and success. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone put you down. You are worth more than any negativity that will be thrown your way. So go out there and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. Big love from me to you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.